Hi, and welcome to East Coast Salon Services Virtual Education. I'm thrilled that you decided to join me today for permanent beach wave processing. My name is Marisa and I'm an East Coast educator here to share with you today a fun, easy way to create a very soft, natural, organic feel to the hair. Yes, using a permanent wave. So we will be using today are our bendy rods. And I only did Bridget Marie with 12 of these bendy rods. It'll have everything to do with the sectioning and how you wrap this to give it a very modern feel. So unlike perming back in the 90s and 80s where people were like, oh, I had to wait a week or two weeks for that to relax and to have that lived in look, this will happen right out the gate for your guest and she will, will be thrilled with this end result. And you will be thrilled because it's fun and easy to do. It's not so tedious, like I said, putting a hundred rods in there. So this is Bridget Marie and after our consultation, like I said, she was looking for something very easy that she could do a wash and wear kind of look for her, but she could also finish it if she wanted to using a hot tool. So she has more options versus having to do her hair every single day. This is just a wash and wear with some um, curvaceous products in there and I'll share the products that I use but this is right out the gate and it just looks beautiful and soft and easy movement and then she could have some changes with it depending on how she decides to style it whatever her mood is for the day okay so what we're gonna do is start with a nice freshly cleansed Bridget Marie, you can see she has no texture to her hair and she's blonde and she wants that look. So we're gonna start with the sectioning first. I'm gonna try to explain the sectioning and make it easy for you. So that it's really quick 12 step, 12 sections throughout the head. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it from ear to ear, okay? I'm gonna section it from ear to ear, not break it from ear to ear. And I'm gonna use a zigzag pattern. By using this zigzag pattern, it's gonna leave it softer so that they kind of blend. If anybody does remember or they've seen people with perms, we would take very, very sharp lines and then it would be like the perm. You could see the break line of where that section and where that rod lived at. So I'm gonna come ear to ear, soft to the middle of the ear doing a zigzag pattern. That's that first section. I'm just gonna move this out of my way. And then I'm gonna to come to the other side. Feel for the top of the ear. Doing a zigzag pattern. So now the breakdown has been from front. To back. I'm going to leave that alone and I'm going to work on the back for now. As I come along the back, we're going to do quarterback. So if you think about, if you've ever seen or in cosmetology school, if you learned how to wrap a regular perm, we were kind of doing that mohawk section. So quarterback, and by doing the quarterback, I'm going to do that zigzag section again. So quarterback, quarterback would be measuring that out, kind of coming in zigzagging that down to the occipital area. That's where I'm going to end it. So I'm going to zigzag there. And this will be our first official section. Now I'm going to come to the other side. Again, quarterback. I'm going to come in, zigzag. Then come to where I feel the occipital area is, and I'm gonna zigzag there. If I put my finger where I need to be, then I know my comb's gonna follow me exactly where I need to be. Take another clip. And I'm gonna take this section here to the occipital, so coming across. Zigzagging that. And I'm going to break this section into two, evenly distributing, zigzag. I'm going to pin that out of the way. Take that next section I zigzag. And pin that out of the way. Now what I have is the nape. I'm going to take a center just down the center of the back and break this in two, section this into two. 
So I have the nape coming in. One section. And the nape. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, and six sections. Okay? I'm going to spin her back around. Now we're going to go back to the front. And in the front, I'm going to use the top round of her head as a guideline. So if I come in, I see the top round, and I'm going to zigzag that section. I'm just going to pin that out of my way for now. And now this becomes a section. Come to the next side in the front. Finding the round of the head. And I'm going to zigzag that out of the way. And we'll section that in a bit. like a half of a horseshoe left here on the top. So this half of horseshoe, I'm gonna split in half again. And the way I'm gonna measure that out is just I'm gonna take my comb and then I'm gonna see where it lays right there. And I'm gonna split that in half. Oops, forgot to do that. So I have a visual of my splitting in the half and I'm going to zigzag across. And now you see her zigzag across. We're going to that one. We're going to come back and subsection that. This is one section here. So now in the front so far I have one, two, and three. Now I'm going to take this section in the front, the front half of that section, And I'm gonna, she likes to wear her hair, Bridget Marie likes to part her hair to the side. So I'm gonna do a slight diagonal section, zigzagging. I'm gonna use smaller clips because they're smaller sections. And then the rest of this, which will be floating over to this side, Coming out a little more. And then I'm going to take a diagonal back. Let me just switch around a little bit. Diagonal back. And splitting that in half using a zigzag section. This is the way I've decided to wrap her, obviously, based on the guests that you have and the size of her head. You know, some people have peanut heads, some people have melon heads. You're going to decide for yourself how you want to section it and where you want to move through. So 12 sections. I'm going to do a little one that I did a little cleaner. And here she is, all ready to roll up. Now, once I have them sectioned like this, what I have found is by starting in the back, in the nape area, is the easiest place to start. So I'm going to take a head, go ahead, and I'm going to take my first section in the nape, I'm going to re-saturate her as I move along. Not over-saturate, but you definitely want to get control of that hair. Oh, here we need, we need and some end papers. Can't ever forget our end papers. So I'll show you a quick trick. You can either have your guest hand them to you. She has no hand, so I will be handing them to myself today. If I go ahead and take the stack and then just swirl that around, makes them a little easier to pick up. You can flip them around and do a little more. A little fancy paperwork there. Taking that first section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to over direct it. I'm not going to be on base when I do the wrap. So that means I'm dragging that. That's where that soft lived in 
part comes into play a bit too. Let me just hair just a little bit more out of my way. And I'm gonna wrap up. Definitely different than when you've seen either a wet set being done or a traditional wrap. So I'm gonna take my purple rod, make it as straight as you can. Now there's two theories to this as well. Today I'm gonna to wrap her ends in. Sometimes people like to leave, you'll see some people leaving those ends out for a more soft look as well. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap my way up. I just toggle the rod as I move up. And then I just bend it till I feel it stay in place. And there's the rod. If I feel like it's too loose, I can come up a little bit more and then I can wrap that rod right there. If I come to this one, again, I'm gonna to come to this side now. So I'm gonna move her around just a little bit here so you wanna get a better angle and tilt her head forward. Please, Bridget, lean your head forward. And now I'm gonna dra over direct it to this side. I'm gonna re-dampen her hair. Make sure that hair. I'm not worried about the over direction. I'm not worried about being off base. Again, this again is not your traditional type of wrap. Putting that hair in there. And then I just kind of wiggle my way, trying to evenly distribute that hair on there. And then locking it in there. We got those two in, two down already. I'm gonna take my next section, again, working from the back and working my way up. Comb that down. Taking my end papers. Coming down. Making sure it's as straight as possible. Coming in with that strand. Now you could start further up. Here's an idea. As I'm struggling with that strand, I can start further up, even place my rod, and then slide down if I want to. Okay? So we'll put the paper in there. And then take that paper. Feel where it locks in, and then lock that strand in to the next section as we move along. If you've never done any type of wave or using those rods before, you know, it takes a little bit to kind of coordinate the paper, the section, the rod, but it all takes a little bit of practice and it'll be a piece of cake for you. We moisten the hair, take that rod. Take that section all the way up. So now we have six sections back here and we have four already done. We're gonna to come to this side since we're here and this I'm gonna over direct back to this side, this corner and I'm gonna wrap the hair up. So I'm gonna move this clip out of my way so it doesn't interfere with my wrapping. Now, if I was behind the chair, here's what I'll say. You see me kind of finagling my way around so that you can visually see this. I would be standing exactly in front of my mannequin or my client wrapping that hair. That's a lot easier to do. So the struggle you're seeing me is just about for camera position that you're able to see me wrap this hair putting that paper there. Could you do this with less rods? Absolutely. Could you do it with more rods? Absolutely. Less rods, you'll have even a little less softer movement. More rods, you're gonna have more movement. 
in that section or in the hair. Can you take straight sections? Absolutely. Like I said, I just want to try to make this as soft and organic and not have that feel of a traditional wave as much as possible. And these are the little things that you can do. If you do have a guest that is looking for more volume on the top, then you can certainly wrap it on base if need be. So holding it off to the side, wrapping it up. Wiggling that up as we go along. Kind of feel for it. All six sections done. Now I'm gonna come to the side. And in the side, my first side that I'm working on, I'm gonna move the fringe area out of my way. So there's the front section. I'm gonna over direct this forward, 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 re-dampen the hair. and we have this opportunity while we're wrapping and again more the more time you do more times you do this the quicker and faster it'll be but you'll see that it's really under a half an hour wrap to do once you have practice with it but we want to have a discussion with our guests about the maintenance how to maintain it for them at home that way they they have all the know before they walk out the door part of that will be during the consultation to see what the maintenance is for them, but we also want to make sure that while we're talking to them, that we're reiterating, having that conversation with them, letting them know, making sure to see if they have any questions, if everything that you discussed initially in your consultation, that they understand. This is an opportunity for you to either talk about the retail, unless your salon includes it with the, um, the wave, the products that go with it, and how to use them, how much product to use. You know, this could be a guest who's never had a chemical service done in the salon, and now she has this opportunity to have this done. We wanna make sure to have a discussion with them so that they have optimum life and the best integrity of hair left. So this is that top section, the back half of that. And I still will wrap this going up. Again, off base. So, we have all that done with the exception of the last three sections in the front. So in the front, like I said, the first she's going to do is she's gonna do a diagonal section. She's gonna do a side part. So this is the part that will live on this side. And just like I did that front side section before, I'm gonna wrap this going back and I'm gonna over direct it. Wet the hair down. We also may want to let her know is that while we're doing this process, I always like to let people know what they're going to experience. You know, um, we are we are guests in every other market other than the hair market, and sometimes we know what's going to happen, but the guest may not know, especially if it's their first time having this service done. So I will let them know that we're leaning their head back for a while, for five minutes while I rinse it out. I may put a towel underneath their neck to leave their comfort. And when I am rinsing the back of their head, I'm propping it so it's not too much weight on the back of their neck. So to let them know, just to have them know what's happening 
while it's going on. Otherwise, if you've ever been that person, you're like, hmm, how long is this gonna take? I don't know. You let them know that it'll be five minutes while you're rinsing their hair. So these are the two front. These are the sections that are gonna be off to the side now. I'm gonna start with the one further away from the front hairline. I'm gonna resaturate that again. I'm gonna comb forward because I'm going to wrap this back. Do you have to pre-section it all before you start? You absolutely don't have to. What I've come to learn is that if I pre-section, it's almost like creating a roadmap. You know, if you're baking something or you're cooking something and you have all your ingredients in front of you versus looking, going through your cupboards and trying to figure out where those ingredients are living at. And then the last one. So I'm gonna retract this. I'm gonna go to the first one. I didn't like the way that lays, so I'm gonna let that fall back out. I'm gonna move that back, and I'm gonna to go to the one closest to the face first. Resaturate that. that rod, wrapping it up. And then that last section, what a handy dandy place to have those papers ready for me to roll. Taking those two strands. Running that hair again. And voila, 12 rods, super, super simple. Give her a little spin all the way around. Now, again, very simple. Once you figure out what your pattern is and how you wanna do it, whether you wanna be off base or on base, those will all be those factors that you wanna think of ahead of time. Very simple wrap to do. From here, I'm going to cover her with cotton for protection, right? I'm gonna wrap her neck up. I'm gonna make sure to explain the process. I'm also gonna give her an extra towel in case it happens to drip. So the perm that I'll be using is Vector Plus, okay? And Vector Plus, part one, is there is no heat needed. It is a two-part system. And what we're gonna do, is mix part one into part two, mix them together, shake that. And then here's really what's key about this. When you're doing your wrap, I've seen through the years, people kind of do this like, oh, I'm spraying, I'm spraying. No, we wanna just kind of get on the rod and make sure it's saturated. Have an area where you like to start and then move forward. In this scenario, I like to start in the back. Again, especially if the guest has never had a permanent wave before, it feels kind of weird, could kind of tickle, feels a little chilly on them, so that way they're not joggling their head too much in the front. That's the first thing to do when you're doing that. That would be mine. So I hit every rod once, making sure that I'm very diligent in applying throughout the strand of hair. I go back in, and I do a second go around on the whole head. What I do in this scenario too, that's a little different than in the past, is that I don't wanna hit the scalp with it. There's no need. I wanna hit the rod and the hair and make sure that that hair is thoroughly saturated. There is no wave that's happening at the scalp. I mean, it's gonna fall, it's gonna run that way, but I'm not trying to saturate it at the scalp area. If your client has an abundance of hair, you may need to use two perms. An easy way of checking it, would be just to unwrap it slightly and make sure that hair is saturated thoroughly throughout if you feel that you're not 100% sure. Now at this point, you wanna let her process. For color treated hair, you're gonna start checking after five minutes. For uncolor treated hair, it'll start at 15 minutes to a max of 30 minutes. If you feel that there's a lot of saturation, please go one step further, add that value to your guest 
you want to go ahead and take that wet cotton off around their face and you want to turn around and put some fresh cotton on and then put a plastic bag on her and then we're going to check that like i said and let her know what her minimum time could be to her max time so she's not just sitting there going did she forget about me these are all the little things that add value to your guest when you feel that that perm is rinsed with processed to the right pro uh, curl pattern that you're looking for then you're going to go ahead and rinse it and you want to share with your guests the warmest possible tenter, um, uh, the warmest possible water that they can take and then you're going to rinse for at least five minutes after the five minutes blotting is key so i like to blot them with a towel a regular towel first i let them sit for five minutes i let them know that i want that water to rise to the surface come back again with paper towels and redraw you don't want that hair to be saturated with water i don't recommend putting them under a dryer to dry them what i do recommend is air drying paper towel drying hair drying paper towel drying so that we make sure depending again how much hair they have if you're not sure again unwrap it again take that paper towel make sure that it's nice and you know um, dry, not saturated, not dripping wet, that would be the best term, not dripping wet on their hair. After that is done, you're going to come in with your neutralizer and then again the same process, making sure that you hit each and every rod and that is a five minute process. After the five minutes, there are two schools of thought. You can take the rods down and rinse them or you can rinse with the rod on. I like to rinse with the rod on. Again, it's a personal choice that you have with that guest and whoever you know has taught you or brought you through the ages of perming. When I'm all done my perming, I'm gonna go back in again and I'm gonna do a cap treatment one more time. I spray that all over the head, let it sit for five minutes and then rinse very well when we're done. When the guest is all done, options. You wanna to talk to them about products to go home with. I would recommend Extreme. Now we have three different families in Extreme, but the one I'm gonna go is to the Classic. And extreme is about always chemically altered or distressed hair. So her hair is not distressed, but she's chemically altered. So unless she has really frizzy hair or she has blonde bleached out hair that she needs to be using blondage, then it's gonna be your personal choice. But I like to use extreme to always keep the integrity of the hair at optimum results always. If you wanna recommend a mask for her at home once a week, we're gonna use the extreme mega mask and this stays on for about five minutes. So they shampoo, they can use the Mega Mask and they can follow with a conditioner or this may be just enough for them. In the styling for them, because again, it's always about what is that guest looking for. You want that curl to look the most defined, the least frizzy, uh, the softest that it possibly can look. So if you like styling, we're gonna do, we can do fashion waves and this will have a little bit more of a um, tactility to the hair and give it more grip if that's what they're looking for. If not, and they wanna go softer, we have curvaceous. If it's somebody who doesn't even feel like, feel like having a product in their hair, curl refiner is amazing. It's gonna control it, define it, fight humidity, and it's right up the alley. Or you could layer it with other products. Curvaceous, we have wind up very very light so this will be like my fine to medium hair texture clients because we don't want to put something too heavy and then medium could go as much as ringlet ringlet has lived many lives it's an amazing product it's like a lotion and that's actually what i use on our um, bridget marie then we also have our duo swirl and we have the full swirl sorry not duo swirl full swirl and full swirl is sort of like that combination of leave-in conditioner cream and gel mixed together it's like the perfect so you're going in medium and coarse still kind of feeling soft still defining and then the last one that we have is our spiral lock so this gives it a more firm hold using a cream versus using the spray so it's not crunchy but it's definitely firmer and more defined so we have a lot of different looks let's bring back bridget marie in her final look again And here is Bridget Marie. Just a nice, fresh, soft, modern, organic, easy, breezy hairstyle we got for her. So I wanna thank you again. We will be doing a Q&A um, live and I look forward to seeing you there. So if you have any questions about 
what I shared with you today. I look forward to hearing from you in our live Q&A. See you next time at East Coast Salon Services Virtual Education. Thank you.